Thank you. Um, I'd first like to uh, thank our sponsors of this event. Uh, Heart Lakes 101 is uh, hosted by Foley and Lardner, which is the law firm that provides offices for the uh, Clean Lakes Alliance free of charge, which is a wonderful um, donation to our organization. Also, uh, we partner with the Nelson Institute at University of Wisconsin to put it on this uh, event. And we also have a new sponsor coming on that will be starting next month, which is the First Weber Foundation. So we'd like to thank those sponsors. Uh, today, we have with, with us uh, Dr. Chin Wu, who is a professor of civil engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and the director of uh, environmental and ecological fluid mechanics and coastal sustainability lab. Wow. Um, among uh, research interests, Dr. Wu studies uh, wetland and lake restoration, uh, hydrodynamics, sediment, transportation, and water quality. So we're very pleased to have him here today to give his thoughts on uh, our watershed and specifically the work that's going on in Cherokee Marsh. And uh, to remind you, uh, next month, uh, we're also going to be having Ken Bradbury um, from Wisconsin Geological Survey talking about the interaction of our water from our groundwater and our surface water. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Chen Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, very, really, very really happy to see you and, and uh, for such a good weather. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> people said that we might have snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will not. So, uh, actually, it's my great pleasure to have the opportunity to talk about the work that uh, people say, oh, technology, Chin, technology, you. I say, no, actually, it's not me. Actually, it's a lot of different people. The people, the pioneers that are sitting here, there are quite a lot of people I can identify. And uh, you are the pioneer of uh, making the Yahara Lakes beautiful. And I will believe that we all love to make the Yahara Lakes sustainable too. So with that, I see a lot of people, you will see I was never able to do this. Or we were never able to do this without all the people involved. And I believe this is so, this is the project that has been working with the community, working at the different, different uh, organizations from the French group, from the city of Madison, the Dane County, and DNR, and so on. I can list a lot of people. And even, he was say, oh, what is that the sheriff doing? Oh, during the winter time, we love to go out. <laughs> and this uh, sort of, sort of wing, wind, so you have a wind turbine, and then you just could become a wind. Oh, it's pretty cool. In the winter time, we also go out too. So without your help, we will not do, able to do this work. So with that said, that uh, if you see that, uh, what is the floating top in the scepter? I said, oh, the show name called FBI. Oh, FBI is watching you, watching where? <laughs> watching on the show. <laughs> but you see that, oh, wow, even you have a book. And you say, oh, what is that? Well, this is called floating block. And behind it is Shoma. If you take a close look of it, oh, wow, this is even nice pictures that people are taking. <laughs> and this is a floating block. So that's what we were like. Oh, what is the floating block? What is the floating block we are really using for? We are trying to use the floating block to protect and restore, hopefully, Cherokee Marsh weather. And that is not, we are doing it in, in the past. People have tried to do it. So, for the people that <coughs> might know, who might not know the Cherokee Marsh weather, they will say, oh, this is Lake Mendoza. Oh, this is Yahara Lakes. It's a, such a beautiful lake. Then I said, whoa, we have five lakes. We also have what, five lakes here. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, we have another one, five. We have five small lakes. But we have a great people living in this, in our area. 
So where is the Cherokee Marsh? Cherokee Marsh is actually is on the upper part of the whole Yahara watershed. Yahara is such a very, very important area that uh, to provide all the water, water either quantity or quality. They're all being somehow controlled by Yahara, particularly Cherokee Marsh. If you take a look at this picture here, then you will see this one. This picture is taken in 2010. You will see a couple, of, and oh, here's a lotus. And I believe there are a lot of efforts that uh, we have the Ross Hepke that have been done in such a tremendous job to protect the lake. This is 2011. And I switch a picture of Peggy You see that? Oh, there's a huge difference. Of course, you can say 2012, 13, and they keep moving forward. Now, you will say, well, what, why do I care about Cherokee mushroom? And I say, well, this is the upper part, it's the source part, it's the source, it's coming from the top. This is 2008 event. We have a big storm. Everyone talked about 2008. Hey, indeed, the Cherokee marsh also provides the flood accumulations. You see, the original water actually is not like not like over uh, over the wetland. Now, because of big flood, the wetlands itself provide an extra storage, attenuated flood, so it will, will not come directly to Mendota. In addition, a lot of sediment is being trapped at the Trinity Marsh. So it's very very important. You can see another picture. Even nice. Oh wow! Everything is all in the day. For your reference, this is all attenuated the floods. Okay? Particularly once the flood come in, the people in the lower part of the Yahara Lake will cry and say, Oh, don't give me any more water. You guys can help me, please. The cops say, Oh, you know, I say, we need to give it to you because we love you. <laughs> but they all can be somehow being, being if we are careful enough. We all somehow can use the maturity much to use as a way for us to mitigate floods during the extreme floods. <coughs> now, a lot of times that uh, I see a lot of you, the kayak, oh, it's very beautiful too. It's such a wonderful place, very natural, all natural. So this is a charity march. You are asking about war. Oh, why do I care about Cherokee Marsh? So then you look back to the history, okay? There's a history that behind it, even back to 1849, somehow the water level being elevated, and so on, and 1890, uh, even elevated in all the time. Okay, there's a history behind it. But we look at a different, from a different perspective. They look at what? From the aerial photos. It means that people take a picture, and it now is being somehow the uh, being adjusted or calibrated right, in the scientific term. It means, oh, I will be able to now quantify whether there is a loss from the land. Or in a different way, the area inside here is water. The area outside here is land or wind. Right? If you look at the, from 1937 to 55, you see there's a change. There's been some change. Now, from 55 to 68, whoa, there is a huge change. People say, what's going on? Some magic. No, there was the, at that time of the period that there are people saying, oh, we love to use a lake. This is too difficult to use, it's too shallow. So there was a decision somehow that the dredging it become Cherokee Lake. <laughs> So you see this car, people love to use it. Right? After the journey, they say, oh, this is cool, it's well protected. After a couple of years, oh, oh, they well protected, disappear. So it's been bothered. Now, from 37, water level definitely is higher than from 80, 90, as well as from 80, 50. So, even during the higher water level, we see this whole process going on. Now, if you go back to what? 55, all of a sudden, then this piece of this 
So when my spirit is secure, and you will look at even a picture and think, oh wow, it seems like this one took the training back. So they said, oh, I cannot say it carefully. Oh, I cannot say it scientifically. Can you show, show us how exactly we were treated? Okay? But in general, there are information out there that by, by the um, people before that there are 600 acres lost. People tell me, oh, I have no idea, at least. And I talk to my wife about acres. They have no idea what you're worrying about. Okay? No idea what you're worrying about. Acres. I have no feeling about. Okay? I said, hey, hey, if you drive the car once, one mile, and you drive another car on X, on, the, on this direction, and put it the other direction, hey, that is for one square mile. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. You're feeling that. It's how much the land that you want during this period. Okay? But from the perspective of what? This piece, as I said, well, it seems like it keep retreating from 86, 95, every 20 years, since I keep changing. Take a look at it. Mm -hmm. It started from the most recent one, 2000. And because we calibrated or really carefully, carefully mapping it. In 2008, you see another line. Two thousand ten, you see another line. Then you face me about, ah, meters, we live in the United States. I have no idea to read meters. <laughs> okay, and I have to switch it back and forth. Right? I say, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Okay? So, in general, every year, any, you are talking about six to eight feet, eight feet per year, loss of this area from the data from 2000. 2010. There has been the way to keep going. Of course, there are other areas that uh, probably were a little bit well, well behaved. In the words, behaved means that we do not want to see the show line being lost any further. Now, this is a figure that done by Ross and, and give him the credit that for years he has been trying to do the great job. To do what? To plant the nice figures. Not doing the work. No, I'm joking about it. Russ, can you stand up please? He has done a wonderful job back to 2003. Right, 2003, right? Not in that time, the whole 10 decades. Try to what? Put all of these what? Locals. And then, quite a lot of First two figures I showed you. You see that plant growing? Yeah, yeah, because of him. Try to grow it. But Russ is a bad guy. So bad. Why is it bad? Russ said, Chin, there is an area that uh, you should try. And I said, Why? And you should try. I couldn't understand why at that time he told me about you should try. Because Russ tried to grow in that area, never able to successfully. And then that's why I said, hey, chin, chin, go to camp, do that. No. Actually, Russ said, I have a hard time to grow in this area, particularly the area that was lost six to eight, six to eight feet. Anyway, you might wonder, oh, why is that? Particular on that area. Being lost. Anyway. Okay? The rest of the areas are a little bit con being controlled. So, when this kind of thing happens, a lot of people will say, oh, we should know. If you say you want to do something, particularly you want to do something, you usually like to have a habit about, hey, can you tell me why causing the shoreline erosion before you start to wah, 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 talk about it. And even do things. Right? So, there are a lot of uh, possibility and causes that people kind of list it or try to address it. The first one, eh? To the marsh area, okay, we have hydro soil, and they have allowed this kind of special property of the soil, okay, and well saturated. And one, one likely reason is that if you see that once the water level go up, mm, kind of flow a little, flow a little, okay, and that's what most of the people will say, yee, that's why you roll it. 
right? And I put a question mark. I said, yeah, it's true. You elevate a little bit, you flow up a little bit. But without the extra force, what do you do? You need to walk. Once you flow the you walk. Do a little bit, disturbance. You cannot just have water level of flow. So what kind of disturbance? Oh, people say, well, there are kind of other disturbance. For example, okay? We have a river or we have a stream, and it's kind of a large, large cross-section with all the hollow rivers and upper part. The river, once you flow through the channel, as you can imagine, oh, so the people who stand on the side, you kind of hold the water tight, Ooh, you have this kind of thing, oh, we go what? Hold it, oh yeah, the holding behavior mm, being pushed by the water. Oh, yeah, during the particular flood, there's something. So just purely float. It really what? Fragile the contractions. For his, for his, really weaken them. But without that piece of that tracking, so you are not able to pull too much. So this one part really the other part is a wing wave, as you can see today. Wow, we have a good wing. A wing going from top. There's one called terminology people like to talk about. How long the wing going on water surface for fetch. You need to not know, yeah, fetch. You try to play with your part. Fetch. Fetch. So, you will erode it. This one will be very detrimental. Oh, why is it eroding even more? See from here, oh, eroded, oh, you eroded even more, become, oh, become even larger. Okay? You will become even larger. You go shoulder in process, right? And you say, I have no idea, okay? Eh? If you do the surfing, people do the surfing a lot. They usually walk, and you go, oh, the way become larger now. Once you go into the initial, the initial is the closer from the left, from the initial. Oh, this one's very detrimental. The more you erode, the better, the larger way you are going to get, and you will start. Special explanation growth. So, if we look at the area, say, well, a moment ago we talked about some kind of the cold river, or we also saw some kind of a cold way. Oh, we look at this very thing. And this uh, charity march in general area. Okay, you have the lower part, middle part, and upper part. Yeah, definitely has some area, one, very, very small cross sections. You will behave like a river. The velocity can go to 5 to 10 feet per second. If you don't believe that, next time we have a big flood, that will kill you. The river will go in and we don't go there. 5 to 10 feet. Boom. Huge velocity. And this one could cause the bang erosion along this area. If you look at the historical aerial code, you will start to see grow a little. Keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. Grow. Nevertheless, velocity has done a good job. Protect in some area. So it's kind of stabilized. Now, if you look at the other area, oh, this area has got what? The longest fetch. And you combine both together. Oh, this is the area that has a larger velocity as well as what? You have a lot larger weight. Hey, yeah, this is the area called no area. Hot spot. That's why I said, okay, do it. Because we have a hard time to get the vegetation growth. And we call this one called shoreline erosion. Ah, shoreline is not a big erosion. Shoreline usually is on the lake or shoreline. And this area so has two features. One is starting from a lot of this plant erosion and also affect weaken this area. Okay, and also causing the water. Shoreline erosion, particularly on this area. This one you see historical area for to keep going. Keep going. Oh, boat. So why is that boat? Uh, you can go on a boat. If you are a boat, and then you do a particular boat. Oh. You have a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun when you go to the show. I mean, you eventually want to create these waves. Okay, about no waves at all, please. This way. I think this has been well, a little bit better control. You know, recently, people will be very conscious about when they go to the 
结果人家，对不对？好 ，another very important part. We live in such a wonderful area. It's four seasons. Love four seasons. Oh, four seasons. Once the winter comes, you feel great. When the spring, the spring comes, start to freeze. You know, fall. Become a little bit tension, a little. So once the spring comes, oh, you can expand a little. So if you see that kind of whole quick heat, so that process shrink, swell, swell a little. And you weaken that structure, you put great. It's become a very, very annoying, particularly from soil or geological perspective, from hydrostatic. You know, we can allow these kind of structures. Hmm? The other one, that uh, particular last year, we start to see ice chip. Once ice start to melt, there are still big ice out there. Heaven being melt, and they're starting to push on the water. It was, oh, being pushed by the water, eventually what? Looks great, and it hit you. Oh, he's not sure enough. Jamming the shoreline, he was like, oh wow, all of a sudden it will collect. It will collide on the shoreline and it's large, a big chunk. So a lot of processes. Okay? So when we do this kind of thing, when we see a lot of processes, of course, we will try to identify which one. Okay? Identify which one will take quite a long time. And once you identify it, you will say, okay, which I want to find the mechanism. But in short, our goal is, very simple. That uh, we would like to continue the mission that uh, done by the French group, Russ, and even my friend Dick Lazo has been the main power to drive me to this area. I came from Boston, right? And Dick had nothing to do with it. Go it, go it, get me to the village. I never been a minority until Dick said he could be a minority. <laughs> <laughs> and the physical or struggle, sorry. Now I can't be now. So you see this one, he said, well, we like to have a lake. Oh, we like to have a good lake, right? And good lake, what? We like to protect the what? The lake also protect the marsh. The whole goal is what? Hey, somehow we need to attain what is the erosion causes. We can spend a lot of efforts to what? Figure out which one causes it, which one causes it. Also, we keep thinking about Attenuate the erosion causes. If the plants disappear, they might be trapped. If they have a land come back without a plant, how is that going to stay there forever? So, once we like to see, oh, we have a way to promote vegetation growth, that's what us trying to do. But we not only we are happy about vegetation growth, we like, like to see the shoreline increase. So not only we protect, but we also like to make sure that vegetation goes up as well as shoreline starts to increase in effect to oblivion, restore space. So with that said, we also want to make sure that everything we are doing here provides the ecosystem services. Okay? We can talk about a lot of ecosystem services. I have no idea what it is. I need to show the next picture. Is that hey, ecosystem service? You like that? And you can have a boat without more than sorry. Okay. You can be able to have fun, but you also have the houses around you. So it's a balance. So that is our goal. Now, with that said, though, since that I will, I'm an engineer, so I usually say, okay, so we do this one, we will definitely want to try to figure out at least a tenuous and logic process. Okay? And there are ways to do that. Indeed. Again, people all know about break water, breaking the water, go break water. Trying to put this kind of device in front of the show. Maybe this is a different type of break water. Quite a lot of break water usually will lead you to the show. But this one is detached. Why is that useful? If you take a look at this picture here, it's like, oh wow, this is an area called 
to a large port terminal, it was saying, ah, this area, we can to see, mm, eventually kind of what? Why to really grow together, become public, means attached to each other. So originally it's what? Like this. Right. But once you put it there, hmm, it seems like some magic happens. Right? So there are rules of thumb that how long you need to be, that will determine how far you need to be. You show there are rules of stuff. So you can do engineering if you are willing to pay for a lot of money. The funding by the way. I'm joking about it. Okay? So you can do this kind of engineering test. And then you get a job done. But there are quite a lot of successful examples. And some of them, particularly on these two, in Virginia, on the East Coast. Okay? And these two actually is like what? Now it's on the Great Lakes. Okay? It's a huge example. Nothing related to the Great Lakes. Okay? Of course, we can learn from the experience from the coast, from the oceans to the Great Lakes and eventually to the Inland or even in Marshall. There's one very important assumption or characteristic that every time you apply this kind of technology or techniques, I was going to say technology, techniques, you need to have a lot of sediment supply. If you do not have a sediment supply, there's no way for you to grow this. We have enough sediment supply from Cherokee. It depends who you talk to, right? Upstream, if you are doing a good job of best management practice, you probably won't. Like, if you are talking to data, usually take a look at ah, uh, once a big storm coming, which will allow signal coming from, from the upper part of 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 the upper part If you take a closer look at it, whoa, this looks nice. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> look nice from the engineering, okay? If you talk to the engineers, whoa, good job, looks great. <laughs> <laughs> now the engineers say, no, no, you should not say it, just shut up. <laughs> this is what people say. <laughs> it doesn't look nice. Indeed, every time you do these kind of things, that uh, you definitely what? Plug away. If you can see from this people, you definitely plug away. Okay? You also accumulate the sediments, as you see from the example here. But the problems that you will see is it's very costly. Every time you have this kind of project coming, future is part of our universe. <coughs> and not only that uh, you can, all you can get to, you can you have to involve with your family. I mean, because you try to change it, particularly on the hard. Okay? We have to stop here. I do not believe. I mean, you standing there to our office should be very dangerous. You don't like it. So this is not quite applicable for applications, applicable for the charity march, for the environment we want to live in under the what ecosystem. Okay? So <clears throat> that is not environmental friendly. So how should we do? Okay? So the idea that uh, we have through a lot of discussions, not only us, okay, a lot of people, we collect it, we usually say, oh, tell us your idea. It's, oh, yeah, we, 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 we've done that a lot because we try to steal the best of yours. <coughs> so we would love to see that one actually is what? Floating. We need the animation. Why do we need a floating? Because, as you can see, at the charity, particular one, on the upper part, the water level can change a lot. One foot to three feet. It is not managed incorrectly. So someone you will say nothing about it. Right? Can you water level up and down? Are you going to build a structure that is stay three feet? Ooh, people don't like it. It's very, very high. Even this one, the orange one is not high enough. Even higher. Okay? But if you are floating, then it is different. Okay? So the second, get a plug of weight. 
Right? We plug away, we look at what's remaining. Oh, there is a way. Oh, this one is growing, but not all at the time, usually this small. Of course, you can say, oh, how small will that be? And that's why engineering comes in, they try to keep it a little and do some experiments. <coughs> Third, once you plug away, you will see the interesting thing. Usually, the environment will be calm. Then you are like to hide behind the environment. For example, education is not able to grow. Of course, you can say, I don't believe that. Don't you know the people. Once the vegetation grow, then you will have all the plants. Then your flow originally what can go through. But now, because of all these stem roots, somehow blocking the area of the flowing area, you will start to see E, you can't divert the flow direction. Divert the flow direction because a lot of flow carry quite a lot of sediment is going up to up there. You will see the water sediment accumulated. If you are designed correctly, you see the concept of detachable water. But we are not break water, we are flowing water. The last one, you get to look at nice. Right? So there are a couple criteria that has been, you say criteria has been is what? A couple of things that we want to make sure that what? This is the one that can be used. That when you really when you really provide all of the services here, people also love them. And can be managed by the local, by the communities. It's not going to a big big job. And that's what we call floating. Who is FBI? You are FBI. You are watching. Hey, you watch that show live. Or, yeah. right. So, this one. Kind of, oh, this one called Floating Bob. Hey, one is called Floating Bob. And one, two, three. Hey, we have so many in the community together. So, it's called Floating Bob. So, hey, you started from originally put certain type of species, of course, natural species. Example, we put you start to grow. Eventually. You look at this. So take time. You eventually grow by itself. The coins from Pokemon in general. Of course, it seems like what? The concept itself that you put some units, I would not say to God, this is a unit. Unit one somehow should be integrated with environment. But with this couple of the thinking or criteria, we say we want to achieve this, all these criteria. We need to check it. We need to tell, we tell us the outcome. Check the outcome. Do you think it really work or do you think it not work? Okay? So, first of all, you will see that, well, originally what? Starting from this, that we have entered, but very shortly that we recognize, hey, this is the wrong way to go. Water level can change from one to three in a very short period. If you have anchor, if you are not anchored tightly, you will flow a lot. <laughs> if you anchor tightly, once the water level go up, <laughs> so it's not working. All right? So it's a no 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 no. Get a flow, yeah. Every material here is all natural material. Okay, you will be brave that if you have something that you know of that God, that you do not want that you can use it. Okay. This is a more on the prototype. Okay? Why is it work? It's a community effort to make it happen. Definitely work. So up and down for the last past two years. For example, 2013. We have kind of a water level kind of right? Go, go, right? So that 13 high, 12 low. Assuming that the tiny part, the tiny part, the number of them, by something. Right? But in general, that's what the case is. Oh, you see this. 
heavy material, you see, even this one is black type. So that is very what? Line or something. Design for five to seven years. It depends on how you want. Okay, if you are starting to grade it, you can. Okay? It should be what? Very, very cheap. Because that's what you are using. You are not thinking about big, big problems. And it can work under the assumption of what is community. Make it work. So, in that, we say, oh, this FBI, right? You know. Hey, that we drop. Second, we will say, well, how about we check in the wave? Wave. For example, today we have that wave coming from the north and the west. Right? And when coming from the west, eventually when you approach it, for example, coming from the southwest, approach it because of floating fog. And you will see that you measure it, and somehow suppose it should be dead. Okay, do measurements. Going up. How do you measure it, for example, as a conceptual picture here? If you have energy what? at the ending point, after passing through the falling part, at the end, you will end up with probably 25%, one four. This is pretty cool. Okay, it will help a lot. In terms of original one, one unit, for example, one full weight become what? Four. So, it definitely needs the wave energy, and of course, because any part, any one, see that you've got the needles, you get the wave. In particular, once your plane start to grow, vegetation, uh, roots start going there, mm, even then more. So we said, well, this is the one that uh, we put it, 2002. Okay, and we look at the dimension. Oh, you're going to see that. Oh, so this is some kind of bird. <laughs> Ooh. And this is the area that the uh, rat previously was acting for. Of course, thanks to rat, you couldn't see the kind of things about. Yeah, that didn't work. In other words, now vegetation started to promote. Not only itself looks good, but it Time you promote the vegetation growth. And you slow down the glass. Right? Now, once you slow down the glass, you somehow being the flow being diverted, the direction will be light. It will light. And we check the sediment accumulation, of course, some kind of detail measurements that can be done. An outstanding student. So many. Okay? Michael Bush. Did a great job, great job for major heavy details. We found out <coughs> in the two years time frame, the color represents accumulation. That they taking care of all this kind of correction from the water level differences. And these are bad elevation changes. And you will see that in general, when you see there is a three to four inches behind the FBI. In comparison with other areas, usually set to zero. Something important. So, in other words, after you put this kind of device or MBI, you will see the people behind the door of life. And very similar to the one we saw in breakwater. This is not a new one because people use breakwater, not using photo. Hey, interesting. Right? Everything is natural. You are not at this kind of a little bit intrusive. Right? Yeah, cinema accumulated too. Now, there's one item there that I did not talk about it before. And if you give me something, I talk about the concepts. Okay? Before winter, hey, during the winter time, what did you do in this, these two weeks? Okay? What we did is what? During the winter time, because we are cheap, we quickly remove the FDI. We are cheap and we get it. At that time, we thought, oh, yeah, FDI is going to be. 
造成许多不满的情绪。来，别超越。Of course, we also see the cracks. We see that once we quickly remove it all, even the window can be as soon as that can be. But if we leave the FBI, you will say, "Why not leave the FBI?" Of course, you can leave it there, but the FBI will disappear. <laughs> Power of the eyes, you know, eyes, eyes, very quiet, deep, loud. So we thought about another way. Said, well, why not we think about this kind of what for? When you first look at it, you say, "Yeah, look terrible, <laughs> terrible." Say, <So>, "Yeah." <coughs> and then the next thing is, "Well, this is not too high. Inside is the FBI, but the whole area that provides look like a garden type." Okay, FBI garden. If you ever say a garden, you better behave in the garden. Okay, otherwise I will want. Okay. Oh, look at the garden. Okay, look at it. Now, before we look at that piece, the first question that people come is: Every time you put this kind of pier, pier structures, you are not able to survive in the winter without the careful engineering design. Look at that. This is 2014 in winter. We just plant tents, create those tunnels, images, and we make a big difference. We have a harsh winter this year. Very harsh. Very, very long. Yeah, coming back a little bit. Survive, nice. Let me ask another show up. Once FBI start to show up, you will start to see the frame go up. <coughs> of course, take time. This year has been pretty cold in June. It's not in May. You need to tell the frame start to come up. So that means provide the ice cream. Okay? I want you to take a look at these pictures. And tell me about what is this so unique about this picture. Or not unique at all. Basically, if you look at the garden, it's just to look at the garden. When you look at the water features, the people. Everything is very rough. Here, second, you see the behavior that the very similar to the one at the third wall. Somehow, being come down in this area. Okay, so it behaves very similar to what we saw from the sulfur wall in a different way. In a different way is what? It no longer look like the one third wall with all the four. Nevertheless, there are a lot of high structures. We call FBI gardens, and we say, "Oh, you better behave like a garden." Yeah. You start in like June, in July, you start to grow. Furthermore, if you take a close look at it and you know the light is fading, all of behind start to grow a lot in comparison with areas that do not have that. Yeah, this is very interesting. In other words, behind it, you can see these pieces all start to grow. It becomes so it behaves the way that、uh, we saw from the traditional brick wall. Inside, if you take a close look of it, wow, it grow originally that、uh, just purely FBI without a garden. You will only have one species, the one we put. Buried. Interestingly, once we start to put this floating part, 
the receptors in the garden start to grow to the different species that we do not do anything about it, they just grow by itself. And a lot of all is all natural, coming from where, coming from hybrid. So we guess it's somehow that there are some people jumping here for some city, which is a lot of them, habitat. The birds start to do something about it. Take a close oh yeah, we're so many, we identify from the dog. Biologists. Oh, all different species. This is the one we put. If you are not putting in the body part gardens, you will just put me. You will, if you put a body part garden, you are not putting a body part garden, you will grow on this one, body part. If you are on the garden, you start to grow at the different species. Furthermore, as you can see from this picture here, that you have a lot of different habitats, you have a lot of habitats, you have insects everywhere. It's amazing. Spider, right? you can see quite a lot. Oh wow, this is really very, very good. The key thing that we are looking for. And do you think this one got environmental friendly? Or is not? You are the one who make the choice. Not me. Because it's a community Not project. Oh, okay. So, with that said, let me summarize it. You definitely see this above. It's like a garden. And I want to make sure that what inside the whole of the plant should be natural species. We went through a lot. First of all, then we need to make sure that what is floating to take care of the water level fluctuation up in the top. Unless we can make something happen, the water level will not fluctuate up. By asking someone to control the tenure, tenure, which is right, right? We are not able to do that. We are not able to do that. always comes to a tenure. Depends on when. Now, in a way, thinking, wave energy thinking, we talk about traditional falling bar, purely falling bar. We said it is 25%. After we put the garden, we were very, very surprised that only 10%. Behind it, of course, because we have extra material up there. It's going to give you a very, very good environment to grow a lot of different things. And by that, that is what? Measure the length to some proportional distance. You put it away from the shore. So, in other words, you cannot really put it away from the shore. Not. It's not going to work. Right? Vegetation grow, as you can see behind it, and you are only coming back here and you may not take a look at it. Yeah, you see a lot of what? It's not growing. It definitely causes a flow diversion, as you can see from this. And because of that, all of a sudden it's not growing. Now, I only talk about three to four inches. Now, as I said, the wall up, we put the floating one. Flowers inside the growing tree network goes to eight inches. That's amazing. That grain growth, the, the grower is huge. The last one is what? Somehow they provide a very, very good habitat for not only the plant, but also the wildlife. Okay? So we check this one is that we are trying to, we are trying to find some way. To protect at least the short run ones. In addition, we aim to install the church too much. Anyway. Again, I want to make sure this is the prototype. In order to make this one happen, then we come from you. All of us make it happen. It does provide some ecosystem services. You will not get enough. But as I said, the way to see this one to the next step in the future is after they need to come from all of them, they're not the only single entity. Because one that prototype somehow they show the promising results. We need help from the layer marks. And see, from a lot of different group of people, friends group, right? We were putting it quite well. From the area that uh, previously has a hard time to 
grow. You know, but not only we would like to grow, make sure that we're not eroding, we would like to grow, make sure that we're not from the six to eight feet a year. And you are putting in nothing. So this is very hard. Show sure I'm sure. And it's such an important area at the top part of the whole the Hawaiian issue. You can imagine now, you are trying to trap. How do you grow? You try to trap the seven feet. You try to make sure the flow diverted. And once you try to the sediment and flow diverted, you are trading the sediments. And we all know about our sediment here. It's tremendous amount of uh, what? energy, nutrients. And then I think it comes through the how water power. And then you can illustrate how important it is. So you put a lot of water. Now this made it happen because of what? All the people come to play the game. Okay? So I have to say that without these connections, the network, when we work together, these floating power problems will not only be next to help. Not only protect the shoreline, protect the downstream areas. So in other words, this is our, not only the people of Cherokee much, all of us, I mean, they're living in the heart, and it's our very important priority. We need to make sure we do it. Okay, I think I end my talk. <laughs> so we, do, you want, do you take one or two questions uh, before we wrap up and then uh, ask? And, uh, you know, they showed on the, the lake shows that they were, the breakwater were accumulating sand sediment. What's the nature of the sediment that you're trapping with your FBI? Excellent question is that we, think we do a lot of sediment coloring. We found quite a lot of organics. And that organics we found actually is that it can be degradable, but it's consolidated. There will be another sort of degradable. So in other words, it looked like when we met the pollen sediment, it looked like three to four inches. I will kind of speculate it will not be there a large amount. Allow this again. But it's all related to we are not actively trying to divert the flow from upstream to trap the sediment stream to the area we are looking We are the area that so far we are focused. We are just mainly leaving that passive way. Right, you're trapping what's along the way. More on the way part. We are not very, very actively looking at one by one. Once you have a big plan, the sediment somehow will be diverted to the area. But this is an excellent question. Allow this again. So, about how long would it take for the that shoreline to, to build out to the uh, to the garden? Usually, that uh, based upon again, this is, uh, depends on the wave climate. Every site is different. You get a wave climate, okay? You see from the, 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 the sort of uh, example I show, either in the ocean or river, it usually take three years of time. Usually, take three to five years. The amount of time for for for, for the accumulate, you will start to see it. Okay? But for us, I will speculate that we have tons of lots of sediment. It's based upon so far how growing it is. I would say probably six inches. You will start to see the water level there is what? One feet to two feet. In general. In general, new water level. You can easily take away. How long does it take away to two feet? Based upon the rate of six inches. Roughly the same. Because we have tons of sediment coming from us. So will you keep moving the gardens out, or? Yes. And then also, how long yes. are those pylons left? <laughs> Once they stay there, they will stay there forever. And then, depends on the next group of people, say, I want to volunteer. Can't go to the next <laughs> one. That is not rust. Rust, somewhat. <laughs> I think I read that they were made from coconut. Yes. All of the material, I did not uh, cover this detail. Okay. All the material is all, but made by the coconut, buried, everything all natural you can think of. So it's degradable, and we are kind of keeping it probably between five years, or if you want to get cheap material, three years. And the objective is, community are able to make it by this. Not the Army Corps, that you, we pay for the big bus to that, no. You do it for yourself. Or we do it for ourselves. How, how much shoreline Candidate to put this kind of system 
distance. I'm mean, talking uh, thousand feet of shoreline, a mile of shoreline. About here is roughly 800 feet. Okay, and yeah, these are the most susceptible, susceptible areas where we are looking at. Now, if we start to look at the other area, then the area that Russia has a hard time to grow the vegetation. I would say you are talking about a couple of thousand. And we should not do it just at once. We should sequentially do it step by step. And they will drop across the line. But, but you can identify areas that you think a section of these floating bogs would be good candidates. Yeah. But the whole section also need to be very cognizant about for the people that who live on this shore. We need their opinion. You close to the area that uh, they don't believe that the divine their own and we put the body from the bottom of the yard. That can I get the sense? If they get my phone out, I would be very mad. The cumula of sediments, A, B, that. So again, it's a time I need to discuss about it too. Well, thank you. I'd just like to remind everybody that next month again we're having Ken Bradbury talking about the interaction of our water table and our lakes. And so that would be one month from uh, today. And then also start thinking about when Lake Mendota might freeze. Uh, we'll be doing our Mendota freeze contest this year also. Um, that will be launching in November or in December. And um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a complex intergovernmental management project for you. <laughs> oh. Have you been out there to Cherry Park? So it has uh, great hiking paths. I, I haven't. You should go because there's look it up on the lots of wildlife. I like right, the right into a parking lot. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. 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 I like the spring because there's hundreds and hundreds of Jack in the Pulpit. So we're the in the Yeah. This is a little more. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more natural than you know, <laughs> And if you're lucky, you'll see a lot of wildlife, then there's a lot of watching how the humans deal with the issues next time when you're up